you guys might know Daniel Ashfield from when he was building my house. Uh, <laughs> Straight away, I knew that there's a problem. It's Daniel! It's my video! Well, you may remember, he said this. Like, do a show about talking rubbish, because that's what we're doing. So we wanted to bring you guys some more unfiltered content. I think you've got mild autism. <laughs> and as usual, I'll do everything I can to get under his skin. It's not easy to get a bite out of me, but that does wipe me up. We did exchange some real personal dilemmas. She cheated on me with her ex on New Year's Eve. You can't cuss Daniel to me. Things got a little bit heated. Bruv, you don't want that job? Uh, there's um, auditions for my new best friend. We were struggling to find a name for the show. I don't know what we're going to call it. The creative juices are flowing. Um, uh, but then we realised all we were doing, chatting breeze. breeze. <laughs> I like it. Right, so we are here. It's myself, Yanni, and Daniel Shah Ashfield. And we're just going to say what we think. We're going to talk about loads of different things. And recently, on both of our Instagrams, we put up saying, send in your dilemmas, your personal stuff. And um, they did in their droves. So someone said, <laughs> are you both friends or just friends through business? We are friends. Oh, Proper friends. friends. Undertone friends. of music. Do we, do we even do any business together? No, after you've no. done my house yeah. and you've done a bit of the unit here. Yeah. We don't even really do business together. We bounce business. I know everything he's doing in his business life and he knows everything I'm doing in my life. We know we have an in-depth knowledge of what each other are doing, but there's no crossover currently. In the future, there probably will be. But yeah. at the moment, we just talk it through as pals. We either sit there and talk about business or we just chat absolute rubbish or sometimes we're boxing pundits. We like to sit there and just gas about boxing, like, like we know everything about boxing and who's yeah. the best technically, who's got the best left, who's got the best right. So people didn't realise how far back me and Daniel go. So obviously they see us in the last, how, how long has your YouTube channel been on now? Are you three Janu years? January 2020. So people think, oh, I've only known about Daniel for the last three years because obviously you put him on social media with you and blah, blah, blah. Some of the pictures we posted up recently, people are like, wow, you lot go back far. It actually goes all the way back to 2005 or six in Genesis Gym. Yes, yeah, so we had what, 19 years? Yeah. That, that's how far back we go. We've been through a lot together, experienced a lot, and the friendship is tight. We're, we're, we're boys, that, that's my boy. You know, you know that, that thing you see online, innit? Where, you, what's that, how, how's it go? Oh, it's from the film The Town with Ben Affleck. Yeah. We've got to go somewhere and we've got to do something. You can't ask me where we're going or why we're doing it and you can never talk to me about it again. <laughs> what car are we taking? <laughs> that's us. We're, we're, <laughs> that's we're, them. <laughs> we're those people. So yeah, nah, that's us. I love that. So the gentleman says, my dilemma is my girlfriend likes a lion on Sunday morning so I can't watch Asheville Sunday. Well, what would you advise him to do, Jan? If she likes a lot, just leave her in the bedroom and go in the living room. Assuming they don't live in a studio apartment. Let her sleep and go and do your thing. I would prefer you to watch it on your television, big screen. It's 4K, I've got all the kit for it. I prefer you to watch it on a big screen. But if you must, get some headphones and watch it on your phone first, privately, and then watch it again afterwards. Or, or, let her lie in. When she wakes up, watch it together. But if they watch it separately, I get, two, I get another view, don't I? Do you? Does it count? Uh, same IP address. Watch it together. Watch it, it together. It's like a family yeah. show. Yeah. She might not be into construction though. No, but there's plenty. There's other value in there. There's, there's other bits in there. What, what, what's the other value in there? Just me complaining the whole time. You do complain a lot in your episode. I'm not really complaining. I'm kind of saying what happened. And if it sounds like I complained, it just means that things weren't going right. But the challenge... <laughs> That's complaining. But the challenge is always overcome. What, is it always overcome? I'm trying to overcome a challenge. And there's always something happening. This happened, oh, we had a blowout on a lorry. Oh, this building here. Oh, the, the basement salvage, salvage projects happened here. And oh, Terry's done this. And this member of staff done that. And we're being sued and we haven't been paid. And see, I watch your stuff. But, but that's life. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a business with so many moving parts that there are just challenges the entire time. It's constantly firefighting, ducking, weaving, bobbing, diving. Like, so yeah, watch it together. I love this one. Tell me. This person's put, I'm in love with Daniel. My boyfriend's jealous that he introduced me to Asheville. I mean, this, I mean, when, when, I ch when we check the, the analytics, there's not really many women watching, so that's very surprising. So what are we what? saying? What are we saying? Her boyfriend's jealous. 
No, firstly, I think that we should, we should thank her boyfriend for introducing her to the channel. Thank you, much appreciated. Also check out Yanni's channel while you're there. Personal channel and Yanni Mice. And it's not the sort of content that he needs to worry about. She, she may get some tips to do some DI, DIY work in the house and then he doesn't have to do it. I it, beg to differ. It, it's, I, I beg to differ. It's, 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 that's not really the sort of I content that differ. he needs to worry about. I beg to differ. So there's no, there's no pictures of you or no filming when you're top or you backed your top and you're walking around like the Hulk. It's funny you should bring that up. It's amazing that I get a lot of pushback in the video when I take my top off. Yeah. But I'm not taking my top off in a blizzard just to show that I've been gym. I'm taking my top off because it's 35 degrees and I'm roasting and generally I wear black. So why don't you film inside with aircon on then? Because I didn't go to a hot country to stay inside in the aircon. No matter where I am in the world and the time, there's always some level of work that's going on. And if I'm not doing it, I'm sitting there trying to problem solve and think if I, if I have some, some free time, I'm thinking of a way to solve a problem or thinking of a new problem that I'm gonna have to solve. Okay, so I'm always switched on, I'm always on it. You're worse than me. You're much worse than me. Like you don't ever switch off. Would it be fair to say that I think you've got mild autism? Are you, would you say you're on the spectrum a little bit? I know everyone's on the spectrum, but would you say? I'd say I'm on the spectrum, but currently I don't think it's a problem because obviously I have bad days, but I, I enjoy the journey. And without the level of intensity that I approach everything, it wouldn't be possible to succeed. Unless I completely submerge myself in what I'm doing, I can't do it to the level I want to do it to. There's ways of getting by, but when was getting by ever good enough? But everything you do is calculated. Like, I'll speak to you on a Sunday night. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm in my office and I've got all my plans. I've got everything on my notes and I need to do this, 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 this. And literally, Monday to Friday, you could tell me, at eight o'clock, I'm here. At nine o'clock, I'm here. At 11 o'clock, I'm here. At two o'clock, I'm here. At five o'clock, I'm going to Wales. I'm going to Scotland. I've got to go this. I'm on a helicopter. I'm learning to fly a plane. I'm doing. Bro, I ain't going to lie. That's like proper rain man planned sh Yes, and at the time, sometimes it feels like a lot and it feels like you're rushing. But when I had my shoulder operation in December and I had to sit down for two days, I managed to go into the yard on the third day. No, I managed to get back to the yard on the 26th of the, on Boxing Day and I had an operation on the 22nd. I actually thought about my year and I was really pleased with what I had done in the year. And I thought to myself, have I wasted time? Have I used that year? And I thought to myself, I did everything I possibly could in that year to succeed. And I was happy with the outcome when I sat there for a couple of days. I was momentarily satisfied and thankful. Are you ever satisfied though? I mean, there's, you could say yes, but there's no finish line. There's no finish line, is there? It's a hard life though, isn't it? To live that life every day. Like, I try and slow myself down and try and do things and I don't have everything planned to, to each second of the day. Mm. Do, do you know what I find? Like even when we go for dinner, like we'll arrange to go out for dinner. All right, I need to check my diary and it's like, right, we'll meet at this time. Da, 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 da. I have to do this, I have to do that. And it's, everything is like military planned operation. And I'm like, chill, man. <laughs> Take it easy, Breezy. Like I find that the, the, the feeling of planning and trying to do everything synchronized, the feeling I get, the feeling from not doing it and feeling like I wasted time is a lot worse for me. Like if I weigh the two up, mm. it's a much worse feeling for me to feel, if, if I was to wake up and think, what did I do this year? I wouldn't be able to comprehend. This year, you're based not on a year, it's a day to day, like day to day, week by week, month by month. What did I do today? Like if, if to this point I was here, and I had been in bed till I was here, I would not be able to sit here. I can only sit here and record this in the middle of the day because I feel like I have a sense of accomplishment from the day thus far to get to this point, or I could never sit thus here like far. this. Thus far. Well, the day's not over yet. It's, it's two, it's 14.14. 14. It is 14.14. <laughs> it's 2.14 and I have to be back for a meeting at 5 p.m. on the other side of London. Okay, give me another question then. As, as, as we're on a time scale. So famous now, this guy, so famous. Didn't have any social media back in the day. Now he's so famous. Puts me on time restricts. Do you know what? He's such a wind up. Restrictions. The, like, it's not easy to get a bite out of me, but that does wind me up. Whenever someone recognizes me, he, he whispers in the background, so famous. <laughs> I hate it, I hate it. He loves it. <laughs> to be fair, he does, he does do pictures of stuff like that. So he is cool, he's, he's humble.
I fell in love with the same girl again. She cheated on me with her ex on New Year's Eve. I still love her. Are we, are we, are we qualified to do relationship advice? Do you know what I'm gonna say, Jan? Go on. It seems like, he, like the person's having a problem and I feel very bad for them. But do you know what that is, Jan? That's none of our business. <laughs> really put one there. My girlfriend is toxic. She left me, but still watches all my Snapchat stories. Do I delete her? I think there's two things here. Okay, twofold. Twofold. One, she's watching. Two, you're checking if she's watching. Ah. You are checking if she's watching. Nice. And if you are feeling, if you're getting like a little tick, or you feel, oh, she's still watching, then there's obviously unresolved business there, or something isn't right. But she, and I, I wouldn't stop anyone from watching anything. I wouldn't stop, put it out there. The universe will work itself out. And I find you need to solve something internally and fix yourself and the situation will be fixed. Trying to fix everything but yourself, it's not gonna work. Okay, so you shouldn't delete her, but then should he be checking to see if she's still watching? Me personally, I don't, I don't think he should, but I can understand that that would be very difficult not to. It's, it's easy to sit here and say it, but I'm not in a situation. Yeah, but and we don't know what sort of feelings are involved and- yeah, how, We don't know how long. Yeah. But it, it's not an easy one, but she might be watching, but he's checking. And when he's scrolling down, when he sees the name, if he's stopping like, oh, she'll watch my story, ah, then it's obviously affecting you and you were looking for it. How do you feel when she hasn't watched it? That's more the question. Okay, see this relationship, well, it's working all right actually, considering. I think this is a good one. Go on then. Someone has said, staying in Jamaica, they put a Jamaican flag, staying in Jamaica or leave for better opportunities. Stay in the country where you were born and raised or leave the country and search for opportunities elsewhere. If you're enjoying your life and you're content with what you're doing and what you're earning, and where your life is going, and then I would stay. But if you wanna, I'm not gonna say be more successful, if you wanna open your eyes and experience the world and try and achieve more than just staying in your country, then leave. I'm with you. Obviously, family dependent, like sometimes you could be tied to where you are, but I find, we, we speak about this, I find a lot of the time in hotter countries, the quality of life is different. People are happier. Yeah. People are happy and, and listen, we're both from the UK. Obviously our family backgrounds are not, but both live in the UK. We both set up businesses here. Both get absolutely ripped a new one by the tax man. This is a tough country to live in with regards to how the world is, with regards to the weather, the tax, um, safety. It's, 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 not, it's not the best place. And people don't embrace wealth. People don't like people to do well in this country. But would I rather live somewhere that's hotter for sure? And I think people are a lot nicer when the weather's hot and you feel better. When, they, when it's hot in this country, you do feel better. You wake up, you feel, yeah, okay, you know, I'm gonna have a good day today. When you're waking up and it's minus two and it's pouring down with rain. Well, like today. Yeah, but you're up, but you wake up at like five o'clock in the morning, don't you? I wake up at like five o'clock in the morning. I feel like I'm getting the edge because not everyone's up at five. True. So when someone wakes up at seven, I've got two hours on you. If I do that two hours by six days a week and I times that by the year, like I'm, I've nearly done like a month, like two months more work than you in a month. <laughs> it is true, it's, it's yeah. What I'll say, there may well be more opportunities leaving, imagine you left um, the Caribbean, West Indies, and you, ca and you came to England or you went to America, there may be more opportunities, but your quality of life may change and those opportunities are going to require more from you. The working hours may be a lot more in the countries you're going to, and these opportunities are gonna require you to put a lot of time and effort, and it's not quick. And sacrifice. And sacrifice, yeah. yeah. Key word, sacrifice. So I'm from Cyprus, and Daniel's from St. Lucia. In Cyprus, it's a very slow-paced life. It's a happy life, the food's incredible, the weather's amazing, the beaches, it's cool to do stuff. You have like a little little nap in the afternoon. You don't work all day in the summer because obviously it's so, so hot, but it is slow. 
nap in the afternoon. Who's got time for a nap? In Cyprus, you have. Because <laughs> you work, because you, you work. And in St. Lucia, yeah. Yeah, you work, and then obviously you have to nap because it's too hot. You have a nice meal, and then you nap for two hours, and then sometimes you work till like nine, 10 o'clock because obviously it's morning and evening rather than throughout the day like here. I personally couldn't live in Cyprus because it's a bit too slow for me, even though I love it out there. I, my perfect thing would be three or four months here, two or three months in Cyprus, two or three months in Dubai, and probably America. So I'd like to split the year up. Uh, is that more than 12 months? <laughs> No, I was counting it, I was counting it. I think you're right, I think you're right. Think but you're about right. that, that's what I would like to do. What's St. Lucia? St. Lucia is a lot hotter. It's a, it's a very tropical climate. It looks a lot like Jurassic Park, you know, when like lots of greenery everywhere. The quality of life. Dinosaurs still there? Um, not that I've seen, but I can never confirm nor deny. I, I could up tourism in St. Lucia. Yeah, there's loads of dinosaurs. Velociraptors, Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's loads of them. Everyone head to St. Lucia. <laughs> I, I will say as well, the actual food you eat and the water you drink, a lot of the food in St. Lucia, like the ground provisions, like, um, like your potatoes and your... <laughs> the ground provisions. Provisions, mate. This is a your, your sweet potato, your dashing, and gosh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> nah, just, nah, man. Your ground provisions. Okay. Your like and like a lot of my like my uncles. Don't we say like the soil or like? Nah, no, my, my 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 uncle's a fisherman. The the fish is fresh from the sea. You know, but it, it's, where's it usually from? The supermarket. <laughs> it's probably been in a freezer for five months with pesticides all over it. My point is, in St. Lucia, it's genuinely organic food that you're eating without the pollutants. So people have longer life expectancies in the sun. This man's still laughing. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm, I'm really enjoying your vocabulary. The pollutant. The, so <laughs> the ground efficiency. Like, so it, these, it, it, did you go to private school? Uh, I, I didn't actually know. So where are you getting all these big, like dropping these big buzzwords? Did you bring your thesaurus before you came in for it? Right, okay, One could it. argue thesaurus is a buzzword. One could argue that. I'm trying to explain it as best I can. So I leave nothing yeah, to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Where in the world is the place where you say is the best place to make it or it gives you the most opportunity? Because people, some people say the UK and obviously we live in, we're like, meh. But I would say the UK, primarily London and New York are very similar. But a lot of what I hear at the moment, I hear a lot of people talking about the UAE, about the opportunities which are there. There's a lot of people in the trade who and have tax headed, benefits. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the trade who have headed to Australia. There's a lot of construction happening in Australia at the moment. The Australians are they're building like their quarries, their mines, the construction. I'd love to go to Australia. There's yeah. loads of Greeks in Australia as well. Yeah. And I've got a big fan base like that. I'd love to go to Australia. I'd love to go there. Depending on your business, there are, there are a number of places where you can make it happen. And I think things like the internet, everyone's connected. If you're going to create a business which can be like accessed online, you know, you can, you can reach a further audience than ever before. Let me ask you this question, because you talk about the internet, yeah? If I could have a different business, obviously granted years ago, the internet wasn't what it is today. And obviously you have loads of online businesses. Would you much prefer to have an online business now where you don't have to turn up somewhere every day and you could do it from the beach, from your house, from a cafe? I ask myself this question all the time. If I would have known what I know now, would I have chosen a business that didn't have as many moving parts? It's the moving parts and uh, the maintenance and management they require. It's a really good question. And the answer is I would have done the same thing again. <laughs> really? But I would have done it in a different way. Okay. To get to where I am now, I've done this. <laughs> I would have gone about it in a more streamlined way. A lot of the times in my business life, I put the cart before the horse and the tail was wagging the dog. Like, I, 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 like, I would have done it the other way around. <laughs> the tail was wagging the That's what I was sit, sitting on the TV watching the couch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about some of those decisions. I think the decisions, the, why did I do that? But, you know, I, w I, would, do it, I would do it differently. Yeah. The problem is staff is obviously one of the hardest things. And when you've got great staff, like my guys here, it's a lot easier. But when I had, when I had a lot more staff and I was running things, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to manage staff. And as I said, I think I've said previously on videos where you're, to every staff member, your mum, your dad, your council worker, your bank manager, 
your um, brother, your sister, you are, you're, their, you're everything to every member of staff and their problem is the biggest problem, no matter what anyone else is going through. And you have to take, well, you need to listen to me and I want to be paid this and I want this. And it's like, okay then, if yeah. you owned your own business, you'd see it's very, very different in the real world. And people say, well, yeah, you earn all the money, this and the other. Not necessarily. First of all, not necessarily, but also with the stress and the pressures that come with it, are you, are you prepared to risk your monthly wage on the chance that you may earn more money, but then you don't actually work nine to five anymore. So when you go on holiday, that's not a holiday anymore. You're now on 24 seven. I can't ever go on holiday and not think about work. Whereas great staff or staff that have got good jobs, when they leave at five o'clock and they go on holiday for two weeks, they don't actually have to think about work. Unless you're a good member of staff or unless you're a law member of staff, or unless you're someone that really cares about your job, that you, you'd like, I'm not gonna call out, but I'll, I'll Gus's example. Okay, to be fair, my old team do, but Gus is a very good example of that. He'll sit at seven, eight o'clock at night and he'll be like, oh yeah, da, 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 da. or he might be taking a few days off. He will still be tapped into it, which is, which is really good. But you don't have to be. You don't have, you could just be at five o'clock or one minute past five, I don't even think about work again until I come in the following morning. Whereas us, we're on, all we do is think about work, staff, this, that, business, customers, what we got to do, oh, we got all of this, we got to do that. With this problem, that's happened, this happened. It's stress, pressure. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Pe people are the number one challenge in any business. And it, what you just said, you're this, you're that, you're so many, you're so many different things to different people. And there's your moving parts, as you yeah, said. But look at look at it like this. Do you know what I find? Because you have, while your businesses are related, some of your business they're in different different places, slightly different sectors. You know, you're talking wrapping, you're talking body kits, you're talking your property stuff, you're talking at the competitions, you're talking all the different facets of your media, business. car sales. Me, yeah. So. Picture this, the intensity of you, you have to divide that intensity. One person can't take all of it. That's, so your intensity, people don't understand that you're doing that for one hour with that person and they're going to perform the actions that, you, that you've worked out together. But then you're having that same intensity conversation with someone else and they're off for a week and then someone else. Like sometimes you need that because the intensity of you with someone all day, they might just think, nah, this is long. <laughs> like, I'm gone. Like, this, I can't stay here with this all the time. I can't stay here with, with this guy taking this all day long. So sometimes it actually works when you, have, when, you, when you have a slightly bigger team, as long as I found this at one point, and I think you did as well. Sometimes you grow your company and you just have a bigger team for the sake of a bigger team. And you don't make any more money. Yep. You have more headache, more stress, but you're actually making less money now. You're just making, you just made a bigger machine to make a bigger machine. Yeah, to say, look at me, I've got these huge, it's like, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. I have my own tech startup. My girl doesn't care or support my work, but I support hers. This, this could work both ways. It could be, um, a guy not supporting a girl and a girl supporting a guy. This could work both ways, so. So I'm divided on this because uh, do you need other people to clap for you. And I know it's your girl and I know it's your guy, but clap for yourself. At the end of the day, you're doing your own thing. It's, it's not about what she thinks or her applauding you. you. You've got to make it work. It's different if she's relying on you and you, you need the business to do well to fund everything she does. Then that's a different conversation, but I don't think you have to have your girl supporting you. It's nice for her to, to add input. And then sometimes they're gonna add input and you'll be like, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. So it's a catch 22. No, but sometimes they're, gonna, they're not gonna know what they're mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. So I, I think you clap for yourself. I agree. And I think, I, I think you clap for yourself, but I, I think the way to get your head around it, like for the, the, the person in the relationship who doesn't feel like they're supported, the way to try to, if you have a conversation and you're not getting anywhere and you don't feel like they're supporting you, sometimes you have to try to see the other value that that person adds in your life. The person might not be supporting you in your business because they're not saying, how did your business do today and encouraging you. But if that person's doing other things in your life that allow you to run your business, they're offering support in another way. Makes your life easier. I'll do my work anyway, but I'll do my work better if I'm slightly happier. An unhappy person walking around with a cloud above their head, worrying about something in the back of their mind that they're not happy at home, it's a distraction. Yeah. If, you're, if you have a happy home or a stable foundation with a partner, uh, they may add value in a different way. 
and they, and maybe they don't maybe they don't get your business. Happy is the key word. I, th- yeah. I think it is about being happy. And I think yeah. people do hold on to resentment or or things that really it's like you've got to be happy. You have to be happy in life because if you are happy, you are a lot more productive and I think your day goes better and I think you can be more successful in life if you are happy. Agreed. Check this one. (laughs) These questions always crack me up. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse the size of a duck? Is that right, what you said? A horse the size of a duck. That's like a little horse then. That's great, I'll fight that one. No, well, you want to fight a unicorn? No, but or fight a hundred duck-sized horses. Have the horses got web feet? The size of a duck. A hundred little, a hundred duck-sized horses. Oh no, a hundred duck-sized horses. A hundred ducks the size of a horse. Yes. There's big ducks. Yeah. Or one horse the size of a duck. Oh, the horse the size of a duck, it's just a little horse. Yeah. They did say it the wrong way, didn't they? That's what I said. So it should be, would you rather fight one duck sized horse or a hundred horses, a hundred horses sized duck? <laughs> Man, <I can't, laughs> he's obviously said it wrong, but okay. So a hundred, a hundred, a hundred horses, a hundred ducks that are the size of a horse. Yeah. Or one duck the size of a horse. Is it a fight to the death? <laughs> like why, why are we fighting? Like. <laughs> Like you steal my lunch, like, why are we fighting? Like, business partner who is also my best pal, not pulling his weight, but takes 50% of everything. Being your best mate and being the fact that he's your business partner, I think you need to have a conversation, an honest, open conversation with him and explain to him why you feel he's not pulling his weight and he's not adding the value. Obviously, there is always two sides to the story. I think he needs to he needs to have the conversation with him and explain where he feels that he's giving more. Because listen, people give add value in different ways. You understand? So not everyone can do that. Just because, okay, for example, me and Bav do a lot of stuff with the events, yeah? He will do the back end of the events where he'll get it all prepared, he'll speak to all the sponsors, this, that, and the other. I'll turn up on the day or I will promote the event. My stuff takes a lot less time but up until the event, but on the event day, I'm under it, like continuous. Da, da, da. So I think everyone adds a different value. It doesn't necessarily be based on time, but I think it's having a conversation with the individual and seeing what happens. And if it doesn't work out, then you might have to. But that is a last resort, especially the fact he's your best friend. Completely agree. Would you and me go into business together? I'm going to ask that question, but a lot of people said when Daniel was doing my house and spent whatever it was, 18 months in my house or 40 months in my house, whatever it was, we would fall out or we would have arguments, didn't they? Everyone's like, oh, you're not going to fall out. I don't think we had one argument or one fallout when you done my house, did we? We didn't have one argument or one fallout because, because I, was, I was transparent and every, all the information I gave you, gave you, you, you're not a person who, some people, when you tell them something, they automatically look for the bad in it or they try to defend themselves or they try to win. You're not trying to win the conversation. You're trying to understand and communicate. So I would explain something to you and you'd go, okay, yeah, well, that makes, that sense. makes sense. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And then it'll be like, this has happened because of this. This is the chain of events. This is how we're going to resolve it. And this is why we've done it. And you'd be like, okay, cool. So I think it's a communication thing, but it really depends on individuals because building someone's house can be extremely like stressful. Yeah. For like for like both parties, not so much if they're just building a house and a flat and they're going to rent it out, but someone's personal residence where they're going to live. If there's time constraints, if they want to yeah. move in before Christmas, if they got a family, if they're all squashed in a smaller house somewhere else, it can be challenging. But we didn't, we 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 didn't ha- we didn't even have any cross words. No. Have we in our twenty year nineteen year friendship? Have we ever had an argument? No, because so- sometimes we hold a battering by the other person. Oh yeah, that's not an argument. So if you do something, I will hot you. If I do something, you'll hot me, but. Yeah, yeah, but my point is with the communication, if you tell me I don't agree with what you've done, instead of jumping to my own defense, I let you say what you've got to say and then I process it. Well, maybe this, this case is a chief, but maybe he's right. <laughs> but that's it, but no, but you know what? Even that's not about you and me. That's about me saying you've done something in your business. I'm like, Daniel, man, that, that was a bad move. Or you reacted to something. That's never you and me. That is your life and me advising you in your life and you advising me in my life. I don't think it's ever, it's never a battle with you and me. Because we have, 
um, so much knowledge of each other's personal circumstances, even if you did something that I thought, well, that was a bit of, like, why did he do that? I know so much about you that I know that you're where your heart is. Yeah. And I know everything else that's going on. And we're like, well, he's probably because I've done that because of that. Yeah. Like, and I'll pull him up on this, but not right now. Yeah. Or the, like, and the same with me. You know what I'm going through. You know what stress I'm under. And you'd be like, oh, okay. Like, whereas if it was someone else, you'd be like, who are you talking to? Or what's this, what you've done here? Yeah, I think, I think it's, that, it's that credit, isn't it? I yeah. think there's so much credit with us. We've, we've been loyal through a million things and we've always had each other's back through everything. And yeah. I'm just talking, oh, if it's a fight, or I'm talking, we've had each other's back through everything. I think that that's when you've got, when you've built up credit with someone, you can't just allow the credit. I think, yeah, and, and the biggest thing for me is when people back you behind. I'm the worst person you can talk and say something about you. You can't talk to me about you because I will, but who you talk, you can't talk to Daniel. You can't cuss Daniel to me. Cuss him to other people. I can't, I can't accept it. And even if I think they've got a point, I'm still not allowing them to cuss you to me. And then I will speak to you and say, bro, just so you know, this was said and da -da 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 -da. And you know what? They had a point, but I never told them they had a point. You don't embarrass your boy or, or support other people. And I don't believe you can pick, you know, people play both sides. Yeah. They say the enemy of my friend, the enemy of me and my enemy is my friends. And that's the problem nowadays. I see that a lot. Oh, do you know what I do say? If somebody says something to me, oh, I saw, I saw Jan somewhere and da -da 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 I say, but what did you do? And I'm like, sorry, what? I said, but what did you do? I said, because what you're, what you're saying he did sounds like a reaction. So what did you do? Uh, well, uh, well, I, no, no, well, I actually, I did say that. And I was like, well, there you go. Uh, that's very good. Yeah. I said, that's what I say. I say, when somebody says, oh, this person did this and did it. I said, all right, well, what did you do? Yeah. Every action has a reaction. Yeah. We weren't just there. So are you, are you basically the blue, someone just are you saying this, this geezer just jumped out of his car and started doing crazy things <laughs> like, by madness. himself? Oh, well, no, that's not actually what happened. I, I actually blocked his car in and banged on his window and he said, get away from my car. And I'm like, what? Yeah, there's an action to <laughs> a reaction. So yeah. Do women back their girl the same way? I think some do. Yeah, some do. I think some do. And I, I think it does work both ways. I think you've got some guys out there that, and not, and not about their friends and, and they're just trying to snake them behind their back and they'll say anything just because they want to use them for some reason. I think women are the same. But I think when you've got a hardcore friendship and that does go for women and for men, you can't touch that. I think that that is, as I said, the biggest, the biggest show is when someone protects you behind your back. I'll I tell you how you know if you and someone are like friends, friends, like bona fide, as they say, is... Sometimes you're, you're friends with someone where you think you're friends and um, you get on with that person, but there's like mutual benefits or it's good to go to this place and have fun. And when we're there, we have fun. If you and somebody can be like vulnerable and show weakness in front of the other person and you don't have to worry that that person will capitalize on your weakness and they're not gonna spread it and you have just opened up to that person and shown your weakness and you could do the same with each other, that's how you know you got a friend. That's how you know that you and that person are, are good friends. If you have to think to yourself, oh, I don't really want them to know that because this and then they might sit and then when we go here, they might sit then. Every friendship has its place. That if you're truly like pals, for me, you have to be able to talk openly with people. I'm smiling because me and Daniel have told each other things that are, oh, that's a deep dish. But what, what I'm going to do, when I write my memoirs, I'm just going to put all Yanni's business <laughs> in the book. <laughs> so I'm not playing on him anyway, but there's things that we've said and we might not agree with it, but we always understand it and we back, we back the person. And, and there is, listen, in our worlds, there is down days. Listen, when you're on an up and you're going on holidays and you're doing car tours and we're going clubbing or we're going out for dinners, that's, e that's, that's an easy person. That's an easy friendship. Yeah. It's when things are bad and you've got to ring that person and I've rang him 10 times a day. He's rang me 10 times and said, Jan, I'm, I'm having a bad one or, or Daniel, I'm having a bad one. It's like, okay. And then you'll spend an hour on the phone or two hours on the phone and there's no gain for the other person. Sometimes you're powerless here, huh? And Jan hates when I do I hate, this. I hate this. <laughs> I hate he, this hates it. He, he tells me this thing and it's just so bad and he's just so upset and I don't know what to do and there's nothing I can do and there's nowhere we can go and there's nowhere to just momentarily bring it up and I just, I just work myself up and I go, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> He goes, huh? I go, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm just sorry this has happened to you. And he goes, 
why are you sorry? You didn't do anything. I goes, I'm just sorry, man. The situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a time when it happened to him. And I was like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, I said, now. I said, now, okay, now I know what that now feels like. Now you get it, yeah. Now I know what that feels like. I'm saying sorry, but it's not, oh, it's funny. It's like, <laughs> no, it's like the time when, when Batman turned around and Catwoman disappeared and then he turned back around. He went, so that's what that feels like. <laughs> just like that. He lo Daniel loves movies. What's one thing you do to each other that grates on the other person? Uh, I'll go first. Wow. <laughs> so just before he says that, there's um, auditions for my new best friends. Just let me know if any of you wanna. Bro, you don't want that job. <laughs> That's a hard job. <laughs> Sometimes, and only because of work, I'm late. And he makes a massive deal about it. He films me and puts it on so, oh, he's late again, no, no, no. When this guy comes late, all he does is message me and say, running 15 minutes late. And I get there and I go, oh, you're late. He goes, yeah, yeah, we're cool. And he just walks in wherever it is. But when I'm late by one minute, the man amplifies it. He gets up the megaphone, blowing the whole, like he makes, like, <laughs> I feel so bad for being late. It's but when it's that, him, he don't do nothing about it. It's not that deep. And very rarely am I late. And yeah, I do feel- Let's say very rarely am I late. Very rarely. And there's always genuine reason, but I always give him a heads up. So I always tell him 15, 20 minutes, half an hour in advance. I don't just, Last minute dot cob it. Oh, it's, it's seven o'clock. Where are you? Oh, sorry, but I'm 20 minutes late. No, no, that's not, no, I don't. I don't do that. No, I don't. No, but I don't do that. Is that, is that your only thing that you got? Is that, is that all you got of me? One for one, then your turn. I actually trying to think what you do that great. I'm a great, I'm a great friend. No, he is a good friend. He's a good friend. He's a good friend. I'm trying to think. Um... Do some tumbleweeds. I, I actually, I'm trying to think. You are a good friend. But I, I'd like to, I'd like to find something. No, there's no, 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 no. Don't, don't be inventing things <laughs> unnecessarily. Don't invent something, but there's got to be something. Um... <sighs> when I go to his yard, I get dirty. That's my one. When I go to his yard, my train is everything get muddy because it's all muddy there. Okay, <laughs> right. If you hadn't hated it that much. <laughs> Let's show Jan's Porsche going around in my yard and tell me if this is a man who doesn't want to get dirty in my yard. Oh, tell me. Oh, was inside. And then let's show, and he did to be fair, but then again, he cleaned my trainers. Like my trainers got all muddy and you cleaned my Jordan. So I clean yeah. his trainers. I, I'll be honest, I can't, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything that you actually genuinely do. I think you've been there for me for so many years and we'll be there for each other. And I actually don't have, yeah, I, I, actually, I actually can't think of, I, I, it's, it's not, this is not even like a madness. I'm trying to think, is, is there genuinely anything that I can think of that- You, st you still holding those interviews for the new best friend or? Are you gonna... Is it up in LinkedIn or Indeed or was it Read Such or- Such idiot. See, this is sarcasm, it's sarcasm. No, I... Sarcasm? I wouldn't dream of it. I can't even think of one. Okay, have you got another one? No. See, that's true. That's, that's, that's no, sorry, sometimes he forgets stuff. I say, Yam, please ask this person for something for me. And he forgets me and I say, have you asked this person? Oh, sorry, I'll do it now. Yeah. That's because, true. because he doesn't have a list. You need a list. I'm trying to get this man to have a to-do list. He won't have a to-do list. He says, remind me in the morning. I'll be like, remind you in the morning. Why don't you write on your list? He goes, I don't have a list. You've got to write on the list. You've got to have a list. You've got to be organized. Otherwise you're just in the abyss of the oblivion and you don't know what's going on all day. When you ask me when I do do it, I always come through though. Yeah, you do. I say, I always deliver. I always deliver. I just have to remember. <laughs> yeah, sure, I do I've got a lot of things in my head. That's um, why you need a list, Jan. You need a list. It's actually really interesting that, like, your thing, oh, it's a minor thing, the lateness, and mm -hmm. I haven't got one. That's, that's really, that's what, do you know what? I, that's, it's weird that we're sitting and we're talking about that. I, that's really strange. That's really, as I say, that's a cool friendship, but I, I, it's really weird that I actually don't have one that, that pops into me and I think, oh, God. And we've been everywhere from holidays to basketball to, to football to, to clubbing to, to concerts, to wherever we go. I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. I found one, I knew ah, I found one. Go. This man's gone way back. The sometimes, yeah, he was like, pick me up. He lives here and I live here. And London is here. He'll make me do this rather than just this. Uh, can, can, I, can I explain? You know what it is? So, no, no, no. no. Sometimes the journey together in the car is the most fun for the whole night. <laughs> because, we, because we get somewhere and then we're like, bruv, this is garbage. This is why I don't come out my house. Why do we even come here? Like, I could have just stayed in my you house. Going out. I say, well, well, bruv, why did I even come here? I might as well have just stayed in my house. Because when I drive myself, 
we talked the whole way in the car on the way there, on the phone anyway. <laughs> we gals, you know, it's, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, so we might as well just get in the car together. Daniel's sick with advice. Daniel, Daniel, he thinks differently to other people. The way he gives advice, and I'm not even going to give examples here, but there's certain things I will ask him, like, what would you do? And he'll be like, I would do this. And he takes like that split second and goes, I'm like, how did you, like, how did you even, like, how, where did that come from? How did you think about that and that process and to say this? I'm like, that's really clever. And I would have never thought about it. Yeah, he's just, he's, he's very clever. Autism. I told you, he's got that, he's got that ism. He's got that ism in him. That's what it is. <laughs> I got one more question. Yeah, okay. This is a good question. Do I keep working in my family business or work for someone else? I think I have an answer to this. And he didn't say work for myself. Yes. Sometimes, if you work for a family business, you have only seen business in one way. You can leave the family business, go to a different business in the same sector, pick up skills, pick up knowledge, pick up experience, and then when the right time comes, come back to your family business and add much more value because you've learned from the outside world. The ship looks great in the harbor, Jan, but the ship was not made for the harbor. Yeah, but if you leave, it's like, you're jumping off the ship. How are you gonna get back on the ship, mate? If it's a family business and you explain to your family the journey and, and what you're doing, like I, I, I don't see how that would be a problem unless you work within your family business for free. Yeah, but if you've got brothers and sisters, they're like, he left to try and do something better and it's failed and now he wants to come back. Nah, mate, you go stay over there. Yeah, but if, if we were doing if we if we were doing something and I tried something and it, and it didn't work, you, would you would you would you say it to me? No, but I'd still keep you involved. So I'd let you go and do your thing, but I'd still keep you tied to the business, doing something together. So I'd be like, okay, just spend less time here and try your new thing, rather than just you leave it fully. I, I think people can learn a lot if you grew up in a family business, working on a family business. I believe there's a lot you can learn from going out into the world. Same sector, maybe a different sector. And I believe there's lots you can learn and come back to the family business after time and add value. I think you'll be careful going in the same sector because then you're taking food off your family's table. I, I'll give you an example. I know some um, hauliers, sorry, people who run lorries. Hauliers. All right, cool. I know, I know some people who have got bare trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I know people who run trucks and they've got um, children and some of the children are placed in different places within the business, some in accounts, some doing um, repair work and maintenance. Some will, doing the repair work and maintenance, they will leave, go and work at like a Scania or Volvo in the workshop for like 10 years, and then they will come back to the family business knowledge and with the knowledge and all the trucks within the fleet, they can, they can service the trucks a lot better and they can look after it and they can push the family business forward and possibly yeah. open a new sector within that family business to do that, to give that service now to other people and generate new revenue. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. So for example, my son's 17. Could he come and work for me? Could he? Of course he could. But no, I was like, for two years, I want you to go and work out in the real world. So he works at Jump and he works at a restaurant. Learning what it's like to work in the real world. You've got to get up in the morning. You've got to turn up. You've got to wear a uniform. You've got to deal with customers. You've got to deal with a boss. You've got to deal with a supervisor. You've got to know what it's like. You've got to get your own pay in. So that way, then he's experienced it. When he works for me, it's, it's, it's a lot, as much as I can be tough on him, it's a bit different. Whereas I want him to experience the real world. So then, no matter what he wants to do afterwards, right, okay, you've experienced different fields and, and what it's like to work for someone because not all bosses are cool. Yeah. And you want to see what it's like. Yeah. Is blood really thicker than water? No. Daniel's not my blood. But Daniel's closer to me than most of my family. So I don't think blood's thicker than water. You don't choose your family, as they say. I don't have brothers or sisters. Nor do I. The saying blood is thicker than water, a lot of those sayings started when people, when families had like six, seven, eight kids, four kids, five kids, like, and there was a massive, there was a family unit. Like, I, I grew up just, you grew up, your, you, your mum and your dad. I grew up just my mum. Yeah. My, my family were in St. Lucia. I only got to see them at summer holidays. So I, I had to learn to make bonds and relationships with people who weren't my family. So, yeah. and, and accept them as my family. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's valid for me because you're an only child or an only child is you, your friends are your closest people to yeah. you. And that's why you, get, you take so much offense is when they do you wrong 
you're yeah. like, wow, is that how you're treating me? Is that how you've so done you me do wrong? Me dirty like that. Yeah, and we have, we have very we have the same morals with friendship. The term is used a lot, but the term like us, bro, bro that means brother, yeah. bro, bruv. Like they, they say, we're not calling each other dude. Yeah. Hey, dude. Like it's brother, bruv, Family. bro, bra. Yeah. That's yeah. what it means, fam. That's where yeah. actually people just use the word and they don't think about it, but that's what the word means. Yeah. That's you're addressing someone as your family or your brother. Yes, I agree with us, but I think that's that term's used very oh, loosely. Now now it's like, yeah, bro, every, everyone's bro, or the, the guy, the guy at the shop, boss man. You understand? It's all like <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not your boss, but you call him boss man. All right, cool. But that's what the meaning of the word is. That's what the meaning of the word is, but it's loosely used. Everybody yeah. uses it now. Yeah.